Game five, Mamma Jammas. Hope you guys are ready because this is what we've been waiting. <laughs> How many months since November? Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> too many months, honestly, at the end of the day. But here we are in a best of five going the distance. Well, real talk, you know, I, 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 had, just, I had just said online that I think that looking at, at five games is the best. You know, picks and bans. We're waiting a little too long. Let's jump into it right now. Game five, ready and waiting. And so we'll get, uh, we'll get a look at what's going on here. Rival on the left side, Dignitas on the right. First pick, of course, goes to Team Rival. They'll have the first ban as well. And while we get everybody ready for this one, basically all I was saying was that uh, five games create such a different, uh, a different yes. men mentality. One... There's more to break down. There's a story of the set. From the outside looking in, it gives me more to analyze. There's more stuff to work with. See, things don't seemingly come out of the out of nowhere. And and totally, this is something you can speak specifically to. Um, the player experience. Rival, last year, walk away with an L. Here, they're absolutely able to bring home the victory. How different is this as from a player's perspective? Best of three versus best of five. This is huge because just look at the Terra ban right away. Game one, Variety. Playing Terra, dominating. Games two and three, rival ban away. Games four, they pick it. And now this time around, they want to first pick something else, so they're going to take this option away from Dignitas. There's just a lot of things to balance between picks and bans where Naja got through mm -hmm. in the very end of game number four. I think it was even open in game number three. Wasn't picked at all. And I think that could also be another point of contention between these two teams to Naja. Absolutely agree. When you look at a character like Naja, sure, we always talk about the early game prowess of the character in the in the in the support role but as the game gets later and later it doesn't even matter what position you're playing blink naja will delete a carry being able to flicker with somebody out of the team fight for three seconds is a giant giant deal and it changes the way that you have to play around it changes the the, the yeah, spacing the positioning and the attention to relics as well it's it's a it, just a single character having that effect very very strange and you want to talk about the science of the set and how best of fives create their own meta. Well, we're looking at a first pick Achilles here, Tully. <laughs> Not very common in this set so far as it's been kind of later on in the second pick phase where Arthur got through several times. Ardio was first picked occasionally. And that was actually the downfall of Dignitas was this Ardio pick for Trix Tank where he was getting caught out of position quite heavily because of the Terra Poseidon combination. The Gem of Isolation that... Uh, we saw coming out of Panic Cat really helped lock down Trix Tank. There it is. Early and often, Team Dignitas snapping down on the Naja, the Lotus Prince. Again, really changes the way that you have to play. And as Dignitas faced against the Naja last time around, they'll look for it to pick up themselves. Uh, Pwash going to be paired up, likely in the hands of Herwin, but we'll see where that guy goes. And now, Rival back on the clock. Polar Bear Mike standing up and really taking charge here. You know, sometimes you just got to stretch your legs between these long sets. As a player, you know, there's a lot of fatigue going into this game That's number huge. five. And between both of them, you would think that, you know, you can r put the writing on the wall that there's no way Rival's going to come back once they started game number three. But now here we are in game five, a hard five reset. This could be now, now Dignitas going into that mindset of like, wow, we just lost two in a row. But keep in mind, different players from season four of Valencia, but same oh, yeah. organizations, same kind of story where Dignitas won the first to rival one the next to Dignitas coming back in game number five. We'll see how today pans out, though. And the bones are there. I love that you bring up the old Dig squad because the bones are still there. It's still Variety, Cuvo, and Tricks, right? They, they've got two different carries, but, I mean, that, that's almost... I think it's when you talk about teams changing and, and, and things moving, I think that Team Dignitas have the right player sticking in the spot. You might talk about jungle mid synergy, but I think having your two frontliners and your jungler who opts as a secondary frontliner sometimes stay consistent and then switch in two different carries, I think that's almost an ideal world. It is. And it's funny the fact that the hunter of the old Dignitas is now the On hunter rival. of this rival, <laughs> so that's going to be interesting to see how he fares with the rest of his teammates as game number five. Hachiman, a safe pick. We keep talking about Hachiman and Jing Wei's being the safe picks. I just got to lean on the passive a little bit here, Tom. It's sure. the MP5 that you get through the consecutive shots that makes the laning phase that much easier. Just going for poke from a distance, getting the ext extended range for even additional poke. The half distance lane ultimate, whether you're using it offensively or just to run away. Second round of bands coming out here. Geb and Sobek paid attention to. Also kind of funny to watch these sets develop. All for what we've watched out of most of the Pro League and Smite and even some of the other alternative leagues, we've seen 
fighting going on in the solo lane. And then game number four here, well, what if we just watch Sylvanas versus Geb in the solo lane? Yeah. The, so a very big snap change. The traditional, like, Sobek versus <laughs> Ymir matchup with yeah. the E-Honda versus Zangief. <laughs> The two bruisers going at it. Didn't really see much action in that solo lane as we typically normally don't see between Guardian versus Guardian. I believe it sure. was actually fine okay that it went for Guardian's Blessing on the Gev. So getting a little bit of more gold per minute was a nice mindset knowing that there wasn't going to be much ganks or action. Man, you brought up something before the, uh, the longevity of these players. Fatigue being a big deal. I mean, we started the set around 1 p.m., now local time, it's almost 6 o'clock, and it's so much different than than just playing a, a high-intensity ranked game. I mean, so when the when the, um, when the feed cut out, Tully and I went into the, the different team rooms and, you know, just the feeling. I, I, I tried to tune out what the players are saying and just watch the game, and there's just an atmosphere. You feel it in the air, man. The tension. And imagine just being that jacked up. For six hours, dude? Because it was, no thanks. It was so back and forth. One yeah. team's making plays. The other team is making plays. Like, you couldn't <laughs> even tell who was winning it. So, as oh, a player, man. to be behind that monitor, it's hard at times to keep that composure. For and sure. the fact that both teams were able to do that within 56 minutes of play in game number four and yeah. now having to go into game number five is a true testament to their fortitude. And both of these teams looking for the late game again. Kronos on the purple side, Kali in the black and gold. Both of these teams bringing out, out these late game characters understanding that this will not be a 22 minute excursion. This is going to be pot potentially another hour long match and honestly these players are... are Man, that feeling, it's ins its insane. It is. I'm excited. <laughs> I want to see these last three picks. It's what we sign up for, dude. The game. It's, it's about <laughs> damn time, honestly. And finally, damn time for Bacchus to be locked into this set. Wasn't picked or banned between games one and four. Game number five, everything kind of changing now. Is that going to be the change? Is that the difference maker here? I don't know, because Rival are currently winning two games in a row. So it was without Bacchus. But the idea here was the Bacchus was locked in after Naja and Apwash. Bacchus having a lot of engage potential. I think the idea is Rival is going to try to focus out heroin on the immobile outwash. So here's a player question I want to pose to you. Um, is it harder to win the last two games or this final fifth one as rival? You're down 0-2. Is it more difficult to win the next two games to keep yourself alive or now that you've tied it, win this fifth? It's more difficult to win the next two. Once you've tied it up and you're going into what is essentially now a best of one makes yeah. it so much just more relaxed, hmm. more easier. Obviously, you still have to go into it with this the highest of intentions and like remembered. focus, but yeah, that next two, after being down 0-2, is a true test, right? Like, that's very difficult to come back from, whereas now that you're in a best of one, you can kind of throw in the Scotty, mm -hmm. throw in the Bacchus, because now everything's out the window. Well, I know how happy you are to see the Bologna. What are your, you've been really liking this pick as of late. I'll just point out the fact how powerful it is against the basic attackers. Totally, in one word, who wins this? I'm giving it to Dignitas here, game five. We'll see if that's what it's going to be. Hindu and Taco, bring us the final game of the set. Let's hope we can. Two to two, Rival and Dignitas going on. Just so you guys know at home as well, for the Picks and Bands set, Morrigan was available. We've not disabled her or stopped the players from playing it for her competitive integrity level. It was the reason, but we should be good to go for this game. It's two to two. Rival took the last two games. Dignitas, the first two. Are you signing with Dick here? Are you signing with Tolly? What are you saying that he thinks Dick's comp is good? I don't know. I mean, I had Rival taking the set initially, so I think I've got to... Looking at these two drafts as well, I, I think that there's counterplay opportunities for both of these teams. Dignitas kind of risking it for the biscuit, though, from my perspective. I'm almost concerned that this might have been a little bit too heavy-handed towards the mid and late game spectrum, as opposed to Rival, who definitely feel like they can just be so hyper-aggressive in the early game. Erlung, you've got Panda Cat on the Scotty, which all also, zero surprise to me, by the way. I'm happy to see Panicat rocking the Scotty in the mid lane. I think that that's going to be really important pressure that Hurrywind might not be able to handle on such an immobile mage. Well, here we go. It's for all the beans, or at least the set, I should say. It's not going to be the first time we see a best of five this year. So it won't be the last time we see a best of five. It is the first time for now. Did you say all the beans? Yeah. Is that the British side? I thought it was for all the marbles. I say beans. That's, that's NA. Beans you can eat. You, you can't guys eat like marbles. your beans. You can't eat marbles. But you can, can play you? with them. 
And you can shoot them at people. You can shoot beans at people. You can play with beans too. What's the issue? What's the issue with beans? I don't know. I think a, <laughs> I think a marble would hurt more than some beans. Well, as you can tell, the casters have been on air. For this is the fifth game in a row. And we're around four and a half hours game time, including picks and bands and little breaks in between. Start of this one though, Taco. Not as many invaders as we may have expected, but Mike and Min looking for a flop on Hurry Wind and finds it. And it is going to be the Scotty in the mid lane. I think Mike's just trying to be as aggressive as possible into Hurry Wind. Kind of just posing a threat to this plush, not letting Hurry Wind move up as much as he might have liked. And Trix thing as well on the Naja. This is really interesting switch up because Trix has been on this RDO for the vast majority of these games. And I think that now that he's on the Naja, it'll still allow him to be aggressive, but I'm not sure Team Rival is a composition you want to be aggressive into. I love what we saw out of Trix, actually. He stayed mid as Kuvo and Hurry when went to the red buff, secured that for themselves, and made sure that they kept an eye on where Panda Cat and Polar Bear Mike were going to go, were they invading or not. Instead, he just held the mid lane long enough. Lots of 3v3s, Taco. This is a previous meta from previous years gone by of jungle support and mid starting up close together in the mid lane. Uh, but the cores between mid, jungle, and support, I think, is definitely teetering a little bit more into rivals' favor, early game at least. And there's so much disrupt as well, which is another reason why I think Dignitas have to pick their fights carefully. Trick Sam for a bit of a steal. Ring Toss did come out, but he didn't manage to secure it still. Panda Cat and Polar Bear Mike will pick that up. Over on the right-hand side, Variety playing the Bologna. It was the last pick locked in, and the desk was just about to mention, I feel, how impactful this Scourge can be. The fact that he can disarm Auto attack based characters, the likes of Erlang Shen, Scardi, and a Kronos all want to use those basics to their advantage. Without a doubt, that's definitely going to be something that Variety has to be mindful of. But Arkill could also play Kronos a little bit more ability dependent that's so true. as to avoid that. And Pandacat on the Scotty, she's not as in hand based as you might assume. So I definitely think that there is some leeway here between rival and their carries and dealing with this Bologna. I'm a little bit concerned though about what Arkill does with his build this game, because last time we saw him play the Kronos in this set, it was more of a surviving build rather than a damaging build. There wasn't a whole lot of power or damage potentially in that build. I hope he goes a little bit more damaging this time round maybe, make sure he can get some good bursts and put up the numbers you'd expect with the Kronos AD carry. He's gonna have to buy or prioritize damage a little bit more so as well because Polar Bear Mike, Captain Twig, and Fine OK, they're going to bring you that early game power that yeah. uh, you won't really miss out too much on a Kronos not having as much damage online just yet. But the late game, I think it's going to come down, if it does go that late, I should say, it's going to come down to Arkill to be the counteraction, I, I guess, against Cubo. And I think that's the one thing, Taco, that you say there, is that the, most of the games have gone late. We have gone to a late game a lot, and as the compositions, the meta involves in a best of five series, you'll see people will tend to lead towards more late game gods because of it. True, but Dignitas already whipped out the Kali once for Cubo. It was game, what, three, I believe? And, and that was the shortest game we've had out of this set. Yeah, but they're still going to go back to it once more. Same could be said for the Kronos pick for Arkill, which I don't think made a huge impact in the set he was in when he played that Kronos, but he's back on it again. This is what you're going to expect from these matters <laughs> as the continuation of these series is develops. Two to two. Do you think Rival have an advantage with the last two games under their belt, or is it still even Stevens from Dick's point of view? Do you reckon that's going to make an impact at all? I think that because of not only the players that are on Dignitas, but also just momentum swings in general, if I'm a player myself and I come back, not just from a 2-0 deficit in a set, but also two back-to-back, -back, very, I, I don't want to say strong wins because they were so back and forth, but those were tough victories. and. To lose sets or to lose matches like that, if you're in Dignitas position, when you know you only have one more game to go and you can continue to boost yourself up in the standings, it can get pretty frustrating. These two solo lanes will continue battling away consistently left hand side, bit of pressure on Ataraxia on that Hachiman as Polar Bear Mike will come and pay a visit for a moment or two. But well aware of the situation, he was in Ataraxia, so he just stays safe. He is on the Hachiman after all, one of the best defensive hunters we really have outside of Jing Wei. I still feel like this Bacchus is such a disruptive force for the, the comp that the Dignitas have opted for. They really don't have much for reinitiation here. It's either Dignitas finds the picks, finds the kills, and wins the fight, or they just get steamrolled. 
Well, blue buff being taken for Rive on the right hand side as Mike was trying to pressure the red buff a little bit. Horrywind and Trix tank. Looks like Trixie's going to babysit Horrywind through this early game, Taco. He's been in the mid lane consistently throughout. Is that the whole idea? Get our Bosch stable? Hurrywind has to have somebody with him because of the fact that he's against a Scotty. If it's just Hurrywind and Panicat in the mid lane by themselves, Panicat's going to find a solo kill. And it's not because Hurrywind sucks or anything like that. It's just Calder can run down Hurrywind even through the emptying of the crypts and deal enough damage as long as Panicat is uh, accurate with his first ability, I don't really see much chance uh, of Kibo really, sur or excuse me, Hurrywind really surviving there. I think the big key as well is the fact that Panda Cat is on a Haunter again, and the whole thing during the offseason was how will Panda Cat do in the mid lane? He's played four different mages so far today. Game five, pulls out the Haunter. It's not a bad situation for it as well with the Kronos in the dual lane. If this goes well for Panda Cat, I think I can pretty confidently say he might just be the best ADC to mid transition we've seen because we've really? seen a few hunters try to make this move in the past, but they all largely lean towards gods like Kronos, like Soul. Bit of a Panica has rival it. here looking at Kivo, Fred. You saw Twig get the pin before we switched to the solo lane, but after the fight with Bacchus coming in there, you saw the blink consumed by Kivo, Fred to reposition back to safety. Pressure relieved for the time being, though, as we tune into the solo lane. There's Ataraxu, actually. He takes a little bit more damage than Bargain for there, getting hit by a full combo from Arkill. This is the problem now for Ataraxia, is Arkill is just looking for poke, and poke alone. Trying to see if he can force out that mounted archery, and if he gets it, you can bet that Polar Bear Mike's probably going to help assist in a tower dive. This is more patient so far than we've had in the entire series. Seven minutes and still no kill involved in this game. Both teams just looking for a window of opportunity without overextending their reach in the early game. Obviously, Taco, early game, not as important as it used to be in previous seasons, but you can get a lead and keep pushing with it if you do. I think the, the big thing to keep an eye out for if I'm Dignitas, speaking of which, Panicat, nice hold. Good patience to trust that Trix tank wouldn't look for the immediate satchel. Yeah, dude, what's it? I think Trix is looking for maybe trying to burn her beads there. Also, Panicat not using Scotty straight away for the ring toss was quite important there. Because if Scotty comes into play, the ring toss bounces between her and, of course, Suku, I should say. Not Suku, that's not Suku. <gasps> that's not Suku, that's a Weelix. I am so lost. It's been a long day. It's Calder Dago. Thank you. I can't remember its name. There's too many pets in Smite now. Yeah. Even Erlang's got one. Everybody needs a trusty companion. You mine? At least for today, I guess. Uh, for today, yeah. We've, we've well, been here for about five you, hours you? now. <laughs> I think I could trust you. Yeah? Okay, what am I trusting you with? I don't know. You said you trust me. I, might, I wouldn't suggest that. I, 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 I trust think I could myself. trust you. More than anything else. Left hand side, the red buff's just gone down, giving over to Panda Cat in the mid lane. Meanwhile, our kill will be given the purple in this lane. Is there a reason to ever like give the purple to support still? Should supports get the purple? Should it be a carry if it's not gonna be the red buff for them? I think if Mike was spending more time in duo lane, he could probably take the purple buff, but mm. since he isn't, it's probably just better off for Arkill to have it just in case. I think we've seen more ganks from Cubo Fred into the duo lane in comparison to Captain Twig, who seems to Oh, hold that thought though, because Captain Twig trying to make his presence oh. known right now. Trick got no chance. He gets up in the sky, he buys himself a second, but on landing, Mike and Twigger there. But all that time, but time for Fred to rotate in. He'll take down Mike, still use his ultimate to get away from our kill. But gotta be careful of Twig's pin. It will connect, it won't be enough damage, but now Twig's overextended, and the crypts have been emptied. One hit is all it needs, and Horrywind got enough damage off. It's a two for one in favor of Dignitas. Might not be over just yet. Panicat has rotated in now, but he has the ultimate available for Scotty. Just not willing to pull the trigger quite yet. Don't think that he feels as though there's going to be enough damage between himself and Arkill, who's just too low on mana to continue the fight. Credit where it's due, the rival find a little bit of a chance at a pick, find it, but Trixak's <gasps> time of the ultimate, last ditch second, just bought enough time for Dignitas to get over and support the dual lane a little bit more and make sure it wasn't too doom and gloom. First blood did go to the jungle Captain Twig actually there, so he got the bonus gold for that, which will help him out a little bit in terms of his build. Kind of odd to see Panicat decide to use his beads there also. Maybe concerned that Hurry One would have been able to toss out some corpses, get too much explosion damage that Trick Stain could have then continued harassing him over, but I definitely still think that it's not the worst case scenario for Rival that they lost that little skirmish one to two. 
Mike walking a bit far forward, meets Variety, who wasn't in the solo line yet. Michael flopped back towards Final K, but that ring toss does a couple more problems for Final K to get in range of tricks there. Fire Giant spawn. No real contest over that just yet, because we've not even had a Gold Fury attempt at the moment. As Final K returns back to the solo lane, as does Mike to the mid lane. Three on threes in the mid is definitely the story of this endeavor so far. Final K knows that Trix Tank is nearby, though, so this Totem of Coup is going to go the way of Dignitas as they collect their second one of the game. But a rival? Well, yeah. This is what they wanted. They know Trix is over by the Totem of Coup, like you said, and because of that, they're like, let's commit to the Gold Fury. No one at Dignitas in a position or really aware of what's going on there. Just caught out of position. That burn, though, of the objective as well. It was not even 10 seconds. Not even 10 seconds for Rival to bring down the first Gold Fury and at a pretty important spot to do so because I, I think that it's, oh, unfortunate for Ataraxia there. Walks I think he it. barely avoided the time rift after the fact, though. Left on Hoppies did both go to Rival there as well as the contest was going on. Right inside, Variety being pressured back out of the lane. More so to get the back Harpies and make sure they're not stolen away. Look at it, our kill now. This build, Bancroft's talent this time round online already. Come for the sustain option. A bit more power here already. A lot of sustain online already for our kill with just that one item alone. But well, going back to that initial point I was making over the rival getting the gold fury, it's that 10 minutes is that sweet spot in a game, I think, to take an early gold fury because it's not too soon where the goal won't matter. Just like Variety, probably wishing he had somebody else to come and help him out here. Nope. Still has that Eagles rally, but won't even get a chance to use it. A little bit low on health is fine, okay, but look at this Polar Bear Mike in the jungle was actually further ahead than Dignitas in the rotation just to deny the opportunity of Dignitas to try and counter a gank and put a bit of pressure back on, but they're still coming over here now. Trick's going to look for a sash if he can at any moment, but at the same time, Dig won that blue buff. Oh, so close yet, so, so far. Fine, okay, just a little bit too far away from the sash. Fine, okay, though, probably happy about the fact that Captain Twig and himself they didn't have to worry about a, a turn and burn situation because that was looking a little bit dicey with the rest of Dignitas having rotated over to compensate for Variety having fallen. And with that pick then, it's about, well, about just under 2,000 gold lead for Rival at the moment. The Gold Fury definitely coming into play there and the First Blood. That alone is almost 1k worth of gold in the coffers for them. Mike though on the back is so far, what's his build doing? Stone of Binding first time, reinforced Greaves to go with it. Makes a lot of sense. If you want to get a Stone of Binding, it's a great item these days, especially because the passive applies to the character and not around you. But you do need some tankiness, and that's why you've got the reinforced Greaves to at least have something to weather the storm in the early game. And Mike really looking to debut the name Fat Man Slam, and I think that this is the build to, to really get things going here. As Variety still struggling up against Final K on this Achilles. He, the problem for Variety is that he can't really afford to look for a, a poke war here because if he isn't careful, Final K just ults. Oh, well, there was a bit of a bait tactic going on from Variety with the lazy back. He was hoping to draw Final K into the Sasha Tricks tank and the Eagles rally. But pressure already relieved, and Variety knows this is not a good situation to be in. He has to go back to base. Only got Thorns up, no teleport. Actually cancelled that. Variety's going to stick around now. The Cuba Fred's here. Tricks trying to slow them down the ring toss. That hits Panda Cat 2. Final K dashing towards his teammate as Mike's done for a second. Trick's going to go in, and Trick's going to take Final K to the sky. Not sure that Final K is the one that you wanted to take up into the, the air, though. though, as Hurry Win now being made the new target. Captain Tweet going to clean him up with the pin, and it's not over just yet. Variety's made it back, but he's made it back just to lose all his health again. Target selection from Rival was beautiful there. Hurry Win showed up, and he was taken out immediately. Final K still alive, being focused, but the juggle is too good. Cubo Fred's getting very low. His ultimate's trying to get the kill on Mike, and he does get the kill. His trick tank that gets it. Cubo gets a bit of a heal on the backside. Variety got left 1v1 with Panda Cat, and Bologna's going to love that. And now Ataraxia might get a cheeky little pickup of Captain Twig. He needs the pony. He'll come to the rescue, but Arkill might take his life. No, Fred brings him down before he can get the rewind off. It's four for what? Zero? Nobody died on Dignitas there? This could be a deicide. An early on deicide as well from what looked like such a strong push opportunity from Rival. Wow. Full on collapse into the punish. This is the fire response that Dignitas needed. Taco, do you remember how this fight started? It started with Final rally. K being a raid boss. It, it started with an Eagles rally from Variety that missed. You know what it ended with? Another Eagles rally just and that's how long the fight was over that right hand tier one tower that's still alive. And Dignitas get themselves five kills out of that endeavor. Rival just spread out too much. There were so many low health targets there that it just seemed like 
miscommunication took place there, or maybe Rival entrusting cleanups to happen that just never came through. And so Panicat ends up getting separated from the heart of Rival, and then he's just picked apart by Variety, which, by the way, kudos to Variety for even finding Panicat yeah. through all that mayhem. It was a real cluster as well. Everybody just grouped up together trying to whack away at each other. So many low health targets, too, that just didn't go down. Dignitas also had a six man in that engagement, though, because of the tower. It, they didn't kill the tower. Rival needed to finish that T1, I think, for that fight to go in their favor. You say that, but technically, even if they've got the tower, right? Rival have seven members of the fight. You know why? Erlang Shen's dog and Caldeir too. There you go. It was a seven on six. I don't know if those pups count, though. They do a ton of damage for free. I'll give it to Caldeir, but Erlang's... Well, well, Erlang's does percentage health. Yeah. Percent health. Guaranteed. But he's melee. He has to get up close and personal. True, true. Every single time, 73 then. The tier one tower on the right side finally does go down, keeping rivals' gold lead barely intact for the time being. The gold fury has spawned, or should I say the next fury has spawned. It's gonna be an Oni fury this time round. And that can make an impact towards the towers of lane pressure if a team can get a window. The problem is, is that now on the right hand side, Final K can chase Variety much further back without the tier one tower being here. What's even crazier to think about though, Hindu, is uh Team Rival full-on wipe. Like, they just straight up wipe, get punished, and yet they're still playing as though nothing ever happened, nothing ever went wrong. It's it's crazy to me that they could spoon-feed Dignitas five kills and still manage to hold on to a slight goalie. It's, it's small and it's not really impactful by any means, but it's just kind of crazy to me. They're just not scared. Well, hang on. Doug, go to the graphs for us, mate, and just show us what exactly we're looking at here. The dip in XP, you see the gold there, where it dips back down? That is because of that engagement, that deer side. So the game was in the lead for Rival at that point in time. But the moment they threw that, they did go down in experience around that 16 minute mark now. So it's a bit of a lead for Dig based off that, which isn't comfortable. But I love the fact that Rival did it at the right time too. They, by staggering the deaths and the fight being so sporadic, Dignitas weren't able to get a big objective off the back of that at all. They got nothing off no. of that actually. They, all kills. they got was the, the catch up moment for, for gold and experience. And I mean, it's still something, but it's not like having a gold fury. Well, talking about fury, the last one went down very quick for rival. And they're going to go back to it again, but nobody aggroed it. So that actual got that Alice didn't do too much from Panda can start with Trix and Ataraxia being here. Just them walking around is enough to force them back for now. Trix Tank turns up with Hurry Wind and Variety in tow. Both the solo lane is now in the fray as well. As Kivo trying to farm up mid lane, will he find okay for the first time? Also, peep that Blackthorn hammer onto Panda combined alongside of the Transcendence. He's got about 20% cooldown reduction, so long as he keeps that mana above the 50%. He's also a little bit healthy, and you'd expect to. Belch does connect onto Variety there. The damage from Hurrywind just to push back. Rival's onslaught of aggression so far. This is Rival's game plan. A murder bowl is the best way I want to really put this in terms of just trying to push down mid. Okay, I know Trix Tank is support Ninja, yeah. but that ring bounce just went against Panicat and Mike, and I swear I did not see their health bars go down. Well, I mean, Ring Toss, it does little damage. It depends on what he's maxing, too. I mean, if, is he maxing the Ring Toss? He should, probably should be, unless he's gone for the sustain option, because he's got a shield of regrowth online as well now at this point in time. So he's going to have a bit more mobility, a little bit because of the heal that he's going to give himself. Maybe it'll be enough to buy him a window, get in range, get out of range. There's some of these melee damage dealers from Rival, that's the main thing I'm looking at here. The Erlang Shen, the Achilles, really going to cause some problems. The corpses, though. Not as devastating as one might have originally assumed seeing Hurrywind on this pick. I think the placement of Panicat's Permafrost as well have made a lot of these engagements kind of tough for Dignitas because it's no fun when you're trying to go in and you're just stuck on a slip and slide. Well, I'm looking at the build that Hurrywind's gone for as well. There's not a whole lot of power in this build. There's a lot of penetration to an extent in CDR to spam Ooh. abilities, but not much of else. That's a tough one for Arkill though. When you Aegis right in the center of the lane, Ataraxia for sure no. saw that one happen. Yeah, it's just stamp your authority in the game. We've just won two games in a row, right? I mean, like, you know what? I'm going to Aegis in front Power of them. Power play? Power play. Try to bait them in, you know? got to alpha them. That's it. That's that's what the R-Kill play is there. Talking about alpha and Mike in the mid lane. Looking to take out Hurrywind, who uses the Aegis very late on. Ataraxi is in a great position just to poke him down and pick up the kill as he runs back out of a tier one tower. Mike's over aggression. He's punished for Kiva Fred. So he's going to get away for now from fine. Okay. 
That fatal strike was looming. And I'm sure Final K would have been like to go for it, but left hand side. Dignitas trying to catch Twig, who stayed around a little bit too long. Got a bit greedy for this red buff. He did steal the red, but can he get away? And he will, just like that. Trick Stan gonna expend the wind fire and wheels even in the process, and it still was not enough to catch up to the Erlang. But without Twig having those beads, I'm sure that he's bound to be a, a little bit more mindful of how he chooses to position and path through the jungle now. And not only that, but Dignitas losing the red buff for Hurrywind means that this build is a little bit more felt, I think, and for the for the slight lack of damage so far. But all in all, rival finding anything after Mike's the one that gets picked is what's it's just I, I don't get it. I will say this Erlang Shed is zooming right now in terms of speed. He's so mobile around the map, and there's a blink in towards Trickstack, who's trying to juke out to the best of his ability. He won't get away. No ultimate available to try and dash and reposition. Arkill credited with the kill on his former teammate, and Rival go back to the Oni Fury. Kivo doing what he can on the opposite side of the map, though. Will bring down that T1 tower and solo, but it's the fight that Rival still want. Variety's got that Eagles rallying, but doesn't even want to bother attempting to steal the Oni Fury with it, Ooh. and for good reason. This could be a tier two. I think Kivo might get enough time on this. There's no teleport available for fine, okay. He'll get back to lane. So it's an Oni Fury for a tier one and a tier two tower. That's kind of even at the moment, if, unless the minions could do something from the Oni Fury, right? It's not just the T2 tower either. All of this solo farm into the hands of Kubo Fred. Third game, we didn't get to see the Kubo Kali because he was just restricted from the jungle and usually pressured out of his ultimate uh, early on in engagement, so he would die shortly after getting kills. But now, I, I think Kivo's gonna actually have a chance to really show off what a call you can do when she gets full build. Well, Kivo needs to get his chins online, and that's gonna be important for a lot of health in these builds, and that will take away some of the tankiness rival will have, just chipping away the health bar with those chin sides consistently with a Kali is definitely something, especially when the likes of Panda Cat on your screen there has a Black Thorn Hammer, that extra health will hurt him too. Pyromancer under threat from Dignitas, they're not too confident. I feel like they're trying to bait in rival here. Ataraxia watching around the left-hand side, but this Pyromancer is just getting lower and lower. Arkill doesn't have a ton of mana here, and Dignitas will manage to confirm the Pyromancer, so they're just looking for the hot reset now that that one's been taken care of, both early global objectives taken off the map. Fire is still on the board, but... Ooh, here, one in mid lane being pressured by the carries because round the back comes their frontliners. Find OK and Twig into the action. It's all on Hurrywind and Trickstack. Grace Asher and Twi Tricks onto Twig to slow him down. It's a Hurrywind. Hurrywind did have to expend the beads there. Tier 1 tower was bound to fall down anyway, but now Dignitas starting to push Rival back to their half of the map. Look at Captain Twig, though. He's, He's got so the mobile. entirety of Dignitas looking to chase him. after him. Trickstain takes him up into the sky. These ults aren't doing too much just yet, but Kubo might be able to do more. Horrywin left alone though on the backside. Got some support from his teammate, Ataraxia. Variety turns up to that middle lane engagement, but on the right, Kubo is still hunting down Captain Twig. Blink for blink. That's the end of that endeavor as the mid lane pressure subsides. It's basically relics and ultimates in a couple of plays. By the way, this is where those Talaria boots and the stone cutting sword, even though they're great items on Erlang, I think that it was also really smart of Captain Twig to rush them because he needs that movement speed to get so away from the Kali. With the Talaria boots too, Talaria on a base level gives you more movement speed than any other boots you'll see in the game. 25% add the speed buff on, add the fact that he's also got the swords that are always gonna come into play. This is a mobile dude. Very, which is why mobile. Captain Twig can afford to be aggressive and then turtle form on out of there. I tell you what, you know, if he goes for a Magi's Cloak at the end, it's going to be more awkward for Dignitas because their hard CC is a little bit limited. It's a Kali stun, it's a Trix Tank Sash, or Variety Eagles Rally. The rest of them, not really any hard CC in this composition. Well, that's also kind of the problem for Haruwin because he's not just having to worry about the beads. It's just Mike's Intoxicate alone will probably take out at least a third of his health. So he's going to have to sit very far back in these engagements. Kubo Fred defending mid lane from the Scardi. Ring toss out hits quite a few members and he dances around, but not a whole lot of damage. After all, it is a Naja support, so he won't have the damage numbers you'd expect. At the moment, though, his rival really positioned around the Fire Giant, but the war coverage around the Fire Giant is just equal. I'd say Dignitas having a nice few deep ones themselves. And this is just allowing Trix to boost his damage numbers ever so slightly. Rival are hungry for a kill, though, Hindu. They want to pick so badly, and Dignitas know it, but they're not even seeming all that swayed by this uh, aggressive 
positioning out of Rival and Captain Twig realizing there isn't really much to gain. Now going to head to the opposite side of the map, look for some split push opportunities here, but this could mean go time for Dignitas. Much more of a tactical battle now. Both teams realize they win this set. They win this set completely if they win this game. And it's Variety under pressure. He's still got an Eagles rally. He doesn't even use it. Arkill has to run away from Cubo. Final K dips out with his ultimate too. Cubo looking for any target he can, but Panda Cat just slips the net thanks to the help of the Scardy Ice there for the mobility. Trick Sank's a little bit too far forward, but avoids the belch in time. Back to safety we go. Both teams just looking for a pick. Everything is just go in, reset, go in, reset for both of these teams. Just treading water ever so carefully. I think it's more to do with whichever team overextends too much. If Rival go too deep, the Crips from Horiwind will turn this fight around for them. And that's what Dignitas really want to happen. Dignitas, meanwhile, they're after a pick if they can. But the problem is, is the mobility, the escapability of this rival squad. And this is all without the honest. This is just their movement speed alone. Scotty as well, I think, is incredibly frustrating as a call Lee, because at the very least, even if Panda Cat does die to Cubo, he might be able to force out the purification beads from Cubo. Look at that I am Scotty just picked up. Panda Cat's gone for a witch blade this game, and I love this idea. Gives him a bit of attack speed, but not only that, it denies attack speed from his enemies that are going to be jumping on him. The likes of Carly, Bologna, Naja, and of course Hachiman all care about attack speed to get basics out. So shut it down where you can. Which play works well here, Taco? This is going to be one tanky Scotty as well. Not going to be the easiest target to bring down, especially since Bandicat went for pure defensive relics between the Beads and the Aegis. Blackthorn Hammer as well. There is a ton Ooh. of health. Cheeky, cheeky. Dignitas here, window at the Gold Fury. They're going to get it for themselves. Trick Sack, Lord them in mid. Nice use of the ultimate to escape the flop from Mike, which didn't look like it was going to connect. Final K and Rival not too happy about the Gold Fury going down. He's going to aggress on some as they fall back to their own half of the map. Twig 2 as Rival pressure the mid lane. Pyromancer due up soon, and Rival is swinging to the right hand side. But look at this swing from Dignitas. They're trying to follow suit from Rival. They didn't really have to use anything other than Trick's Tank's ultimate. Which isn't a bad situation to be in. It just means Trix is one of the setups, right? I, I will say that it is semi bad because Trix Tank is a large part of this Dignitas setup. Flop from Mike hits Hurry Wind, but turns around and belches on towards Trix Tank and Cubo. Cubo, though, has got a lot of alone time with Twig, and he was also in the Crips. Fine, okay, in the back line, he's trying to deal with Ataraxi variety and Hurry Wind. His ultimate's down, the horse he chases on. Eagles rally T, but Fine, okay's blink gets him away on top of that. It's all one man pick so far. Fine, okay, he's done a very good job and distracted until Trick Sank finds a sash. He's looking for extra follow up. Where's his team? Not nearby. Stun from Arkill connects. The tier one tower will fall. Just so much damage. Indignitas, even though they're the ones looking to just play defense and, and counter react to Rival, I don't think that Rival were expecting the damage to come through that quickly. It's Carly time, baby. We knew it was coming. We knew we needed the chins online. He's also got the Odysseus bow to go with it. And now it's the Cubo Fred show. Can he find the kills you expect a Carly in the late game full build to make? A lot of melee targets to deal with, but that's also a boon for him because they need to be in range to hit him just as much as he needs to be in range to hit that. I think Mike just has to go on Carly duty for his carries. E even for it's Captain hard. Twig building that Nemean. I I'm not certain if Twig already had the Nemean online when he died there, but I think it's definitely going to pose a, a little bit of issues for the Kali. Not nearly as much as Mike's mid Guardian will or even Panda Cat's Witchblade, but it's clear that Rival are, are recognizing the problem being this Kali and looking for ways to deal with it. But even if they take care of Kali, they got to be careful not to overdo it. Otherwise, Horiwin and everybody else from Dignitas well, might be able to just clean sweep them. And that's always the issue with these compositions is sometimes you're like, okay, it's Carly, she's the problem. We've got to take her out. But don't leave Ataraxia unchecked on that Hachi man. He's already 3-0 and 3 in this game. Higher player damage than Cubo Fred, who, just so you know, Cubo Fred is 1-0 and 6 and has 6k player damage right now. But this is where he may... It doesn't matter how much damage you do as long as people die. He just got like 2k damage killing Twig. Hello, yeah, pretty much. Though, Rival, still not we're leaving the pressure so far. They're grouping up in mid lane. Trick Sank going to be the first one to check out what's going on. He's going to get stunned on. No, just escapes the range in time. Left hand side. Captain Twig making sure that he takes away some of the jungle and maybe looks for a tier 2 tower. Trick Sank, meanwhile, ring tosses. Slows down fine. Okay. But it's actually Variety. Very scared there. Will Eagles rally early on. Back to the safety. Rival diving in. 
Scotty has been used. She used the ultimate for Caldea, but it wasn't enough to get variety. However, the hurry will also empty the crypt. Cubo Fred is split pushing. Uh, Dignitas needs to keep Don't chasing. No one can back. Captain Twig, though, going to be the first back. one to head back. He should be able to play defense, but this is risky business for Twig here, now trying to deal with the Kali. Alexa blinks in on the right hand side. Meanwhile, Variety, sorry, Trixan did take one to the sky for fine. Okay. Anoraxia and Horiwin on check to the back as Polar Bear back hits both of them. Twig solos Cubo, Fred at the Phoenix line. Phoenix probably made a big play there, but Variety's back, and that ultimate from Anoraxia just hit all four members of Rival. Rival still trying to run like their lives depend on it because they really do at this point. Oh, Arco got the rewind going? off though, and he's gonna go back in time to a place that he probably did not want to be to begin with. Trying to do what he can to buy some Still time. Alive. He's so fast. Pandacat to the back line though, looking to clean it up. He reinitiates. Now he's out of position too. Fine, okay, is with him though. His polar bear Mike gets brought down by Variety after an Eagles rally. The fight continues and it's all over. Well, technically nothing now. No objectives on this left hand side in terms of neutral ones are available. It should have ended at Arkill getting the rewind off, and the rest of Rival needed to just dip. Well, they kind of did, but they're going to lose a tier one time the left. Potentially a tier two now. Dignitas, four members strong in that engagement. If you take into account, it was both Captain Twig and Kivo Fred out of that fight completely. But Kali being dead, and Captain Twig finding that solo kill was such a huge sigh of relief for Rival, only for them to then reinitiate and it's one thing to lose Arkill, but I definitely don't think that Mike needed to stick around any longer. I think sometimes you just have to cut your losses and I know it's tough for these guys because especially Mike as a support player, he almost feels like it's his duty every single time one of his carries is in danger to go back and try to save them. But now Dignitas don't just get a kill onto Arkill and Polar Mike, they get a T2 Tower, a T2 Tower and possibly even the Oni Fury. So this gold lead and experience lead that didn't seem too detrimental before between Digitas and Rival is now going to skyrocket. Just shows the swings of this game and 15 minutes in, there was a lead for Rival until a big old Dia sign for Dignitas. And now with that Oni Fury, Dignitas have extended it to 7,500 gold. There's just one tier two tower remaining for Rival to defend. And they've not really found what they've been after tackle. It feels like Rival's comp was very much a birder ball. It looks like they wanted to jump in, dive into the back line. But Dignitas have done, done a very good job of stemming that aggression and trying to keep Rival a little bit more on the back foot. A lot of that is the Alp Wash and the Crips that they've got to play around every single time. Well, I hate to say it too, Indu, but I honestly think that Arkeel is handicapping himself with this Jade Emperor's crown. I, I kind of understand the concept of wanting you know, defensive options here, but yeah. I just can't imagine how much more damage he would be dealing with a Polynomicon, a Telkine's Reign, literally anything but this item. I think he will change out as time goes on, though. I mean, this is full build now, so he's probably looking towards that as an upgrade eventually. Cuba Fred up against Twig for a second. No one using any relics there whatsoever or ultimates. But it just showed that Twig is vulnerable to damage against this Cubo Fred build. I just Cloak is on cooldown for a minute. And that's probably one of the reasons Cubo Fred has decided not to keep the push going. Dignitas still giving a lot of respect to Rival as well with the way that they're choosing to stay grouped. They know that if even one of their carries puts a toe out of line, Rival will be more than happy to scoop them up. So Variety, I think, has also definitely picked things up ever since that turnaround play underneath his T1 tower dive. Just seem all of a sudden Rival have kind of like given up the pressure around the middle area a little bit more. They've given a bit more respect to Dignitas, the fact that Dignitas have a substantial goal lead at this point. But fine, okay, just went into the whole squad, slows them all down from aggressive. Now Twig goes in with a blink, he gets the beat out of Ataraxia. Ataraxia needs some help and gets it, but he has to use everything to get away. Eagles Rally now on cooldown too. Arkill now looking at the back line for Hurrywind, and Hurrywind needs some peel. He's getting some good work from Variety, but he still gives Mike a window to get in and beat him down. Hurrywind off the map. But look at Panicat trying to juke around on top of his permafrost. Ultimate expended from Cubo Fred as he's looking to bring the Scotty down, and he finds it. Arkill goes down before he can get away though with the rewind. He was looking for the pick on Cubo Fred at the end. And it didn't work out. Great slash from Trix and catches Polar Bear Mike. But he is a tanky target. Fine, okay, meanwhile, he started this fight off still alive. Trix gonna have to make sure that Bacchus is out of the fight. Fine, okay, trying to buy some time on the left as well. Dignitas kind of wasting time here looking for picks when they could be on the fire giant. And as I say that, they hear me and go straight back to it. Not a guaranteed. 
Fire Giant just yet, but they are making quick work of it. Captain Twig has made his way back over, though, so is Fine OK. Teleports are good, but that Sentry Ward definitely just gave Fine OK away. Getting very low, the pulls are down. Diggs has get the Fire Giant. Cuba Fred jumps out of the fray. Twig, though, takes out Ataraxia. He will go down in trade. Cuba Fred gets the kill. Trick Tank, Kivo, and Variety will have the Fire Giant for the next few minutes. That's a huge pick, though, because Hurry Win. Uh Dignitas couldn't afford to wait for Hurrywind to respawn because then they risk Rival getting a steal opportunity, but Ataraxia going down, I think that's going to put a damper on Dignitas' initial push and sitting out at least a minute of that enhanced fire giant definitely hurts. You definitely see how Rival played the fights though. It's kind of Achilles go in, then back out. Erlang go in, then back out, and they're trying to whittle down the health bars bit by bit. The relics more than anything else. Out of the likes of the Hachi Man, out of the Arpoash, and then hoping that maybe even Mike can get in there, the Scotty, the Kronos, and clean up the kills is the real game plan. Consistent poke, and then execution. The problem is, is that Dignitas have just held on too long every time. For a moment there, I, I honestly thought that Hurryman was going to get out scot-free. Yeah. It was just Mike finding him with the with the flop over the wall. It didn't even hit the flop either. Legit just had to expend the Intoxicate on a single target pick. But uh, that was definitely a kill that needed to happen. And I, I think that if Hurryman hadn't died there, Dignitas might have very well just completely wiped all of Rival. Kiva Fred a little bit far forward on that right hand side there, trying to D ward, did a good job of it. Trick Tank will get away from the call there for the time being. Dignitas trying to work out where they want to go. They pressure Dominions on the left hand side, try to force somebody from Rival to defend and open up a window at the tier two in mid. But plenty of healthy targets in the mid lane for Rival to defend with at the moment. Variety of tricks leading the fray, but they didn't have any backup. All minions are a little bit far forward as the flop connects. Our kill though, he was trying to come round a corner and he just got evaporated. It's only a 4v5. And it's just getting worse here. Panicat's going to be the next oh, target no. to fall. Cubo Fred still alive with one HP and a dream. Going to kill Polar Bear Mike for the heal. And Hindu, this could very well be it. It's been four games, but I think we could be going... Well, the end of the set could be coming right now if this Phoenix goes down. Into the base goes Dignitas, looking to close out this very long best of five and take down the Titan. They're ignoring Rival. There's no reason to pay any attention to Fine OK. Try as he may, it's just not going to be enough here. And Man. Dignitas off the back of Cubo <laughs> Fred, by the way, bringing home the set. You saw the relief on Variety's face at the end of the game there. It's like, that's how we do it. They've just lost two games in a row. And then to bounce back and find that win at the end, very important for them. Rival on the other side, they should be happy with their performance overall, I will say. Maybe not, you know, the consistency of the sets weren't great for them, but they're, for their first fray onto the battlefield against a dig roster that had a little bit more live game time than them so far this year, they did well. That was that was definitely uh, such a back and forth heavy action set between these two teams. I'm really excited to see how the rest of the season pans out for both of them. I really have no clue who's winning this year. I, I normally <laughs> I can go into the year and be like, ah, one or two teams have a chance. I think there's a lot more than that in the league right now, Taco. There's so many different options to look at, and even some of the teams that haven't had a chance to play yet, we still don't know what to expect from them. When you think about it, we've only had four sets so far. But let's go to the desk to break down that in set in the entirety. It's Tom and it's Tolly. It is Tom and it is Tolly. And it is game five and it is over. And it does go to Team Dignitas. Look at that I one. called it. Just like Valencia back in season four. It, it's funny. We were sitting there in the green room and I was just sitting there and I was. I watched the first half actually with Trifecta who's here screaming. And we all had, a, had a lot of interesting things to say about the game, but I think it all came down to, well, they both drafted with the idea of going late. Kronos yes. on one side, Kali on the other. And I went, I'll just put my money on Kivo's, on Kivo's uh, chin side machine, Kali. Yeah. It just, oh man, what do you do? <laughs> well, you needed the anti attack speed. And unfortunately for Captain Twig on the Erlong Shun, he went for a Hide of Nemean line defensively, mm -hmm. which makes a little bit of sense, but nobody built crit at all. You want to get more Guardian Mail instead in that position to be able to limit the attack sure. speed of the Kali. We did see the two Witch Blades come out uh, on on the side of Rival. I thought that was some of the, the, the correct thought process. But And, and I'm not going to isolate Arkel as the problem here overall, but I think that this Kronos build had a little bit to be desired, and this is the build that he had been going, uh, he had played earlier on Kronos as well. The, the the Jade Crown just didn't really do it for me, and I think kind of hurt him a little bit, and that Hasten Ring came way later in the game, that's after Speed Elixir, so he was kind of low on penetration as well. 
That's true. But the thing is, Jade Emperor's crown with the minus 30 physical power, when you're getting dove by Naja, Kali, right. Bologna, that minus 30 power might be the difference between you surviving and getting the rewind off or being just another casualty. That's fair. You do zero DPS while dead. Something to think about, though. And for sure, Kivo Fred, as I said, uh, just won that last game. 615 GPM. That's absurd, by the way. And his ability to just control it. What's interesting when you look at late game characters like that is the player damage is one thing, but uh, everything else. Pause that because this was a team fight. This totally dive, yeah, Rival specifically already had a significant 2,000 goalie. They get one pick, and then they decide to tower dive the tier yeah. one tower. And the reasoning behind it, my only logical explanation was Alposh ultimate was down, his corpse explosion was down, everyone was relatively healthy, they just decided to take a gamble, but then they got decided because of the great rotation coming from their hunter player. And that was that was back to back. These two plays that we just watched, back to back situations where I feel rival just stayed a little bit oh. too long. The tower dive that totally illustrated, we were looking at players getting hit by four, five, six, seven tower shots, and that ultimately spilled yeah. their demise. And then that one that I started talking about, where Bologna kills Kronos down the lane, that was they were uh, the rival was running down the lane, and Arkel kind of goes back to take it for the team, but then another player comes back to take it for the team. And then all of a sudden, Bologna is just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. The triple uh, bludgeon, actually, <laughs> getting that extra slam damage, that minus 30 physical power you're getting from Jade Emperor's <laughs> crown, not enough to save your life. There. Not there, unfortunately, for Rival and their fans. But, you know, I do want to, not, not, not to be needlessly positive, and if you've been here for any amount of time, you know that that's not me. But I do want to focus on some of the positive, man. Rival looked good here. This is a situation where Rival kind of leave with their heads ha hanging high. Maybe they should have won, but I, I, I think that this is certainly a strong performance out of Team Rival. Out of Team Dignitas, though, we'll take it from the horse's mouth. we got players standing by for their post-game interview. We do have players standing by. Congratulations, Dignitas. You found the very first five-game series of Season 6. Uh, did you expect it, boys, to go five games? Um... Honestly, I had an expectation that it would go five games, but I, I believed it in so much that I thought it was going to be like a free one. I did not expect every game to be like one hour long and then out to a five five uh, five game, but uh, we, we came out ahead and it feels good after such a long set. And what's the team mindset like going from being in a 2-0 lead situation to then a 2-2 two -to -two down to the wire for the fifth game? Um it's one of those situations where you're not really sure. You, you think you had an idea of what was going on, then you lose two games in a row, and you kind of have to reevaluate like from the beginning. Um, and everyone, like Biggie, helps a lot. Like helps us collect our heads, just start new, have confidence in whatever else we're gonna doing, wh whatever else we're doing, and just not overthink it. So with how these games are going now, with best of fives too, like you found the first two wins so far, the first two sets you played. Did you expect it to go this well at the start? Like, what, what are the things that you guys are looking to work on next? Um, I'm not, we, we have to work on everything in, in specifically, but I think, uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, it feels good to get the first two wins at least. You're off to a good start and, uh, and uh, also after this set. Looking forward, I think we just gotta, gotta, gotta keep practicing, having an open mindset, uh, going home, analyzing these games, what went wrong in the last two games. And, and and see what we can do better from uh, from now on. Oh, when last question to you. You have four Europeans. How's things getting on with these guys so far? <laughs> uh, it's really fun when we win, um, and it's really fun outside of the game. When we lose, that's a little bit of, of a different story. I mean, it's probably the same with everyone, but I don't know. It's been a blast. Like I really underestimated how fun it was going to be, like playing with these guys. So, congratulations again on your victory today. Good luck in the rest of the year. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Tyler and Yeppi really bringing, uh, bringing the fun there. Another big dig win going their way. Between winning against Space Station Gaming last week and now a 3-2 to two victory over Rival, they are just doing a solid performance. Keep in mind, Knights are also doing a good job last week. As well. Yeah, Dignitas look out of control. And before we, tossed it, before we went over to the interview, we uh, were talking about Team Rival. And I want to get your thoughts on them before we, uh, before we close for the day. Because, again, I think Rival looked strong. There were some obvious moments that didn't really work out. But this is their, uh, this is their opening day. Dignitas had a chance to warm up. 
up. So what's your take on, on Team Rival here? Honestly, I like the way they just started off the day with like this weird janky speed buff invade PBM on the uh, Fafnir stealing the speed buff <laughs> and then losing their own red buff in response. Didn't really work out for them in the first two games. They shifted around where they realized Terra was a problem in game number one. The Nemesis pick in game three for Captain Twig seemed like it was in this comfort spot in the wheelhouse. Bringing a wide variety of strategies from Rivals, succeeding on some, losing it on others. I have high hopes for them as the season progresses. A difficult opponent in Dignitas, so I don't necessarily blame them for losing here, but the fact that they were able to bounce back mentally after being down 0-2, I give them like an A- actually, despite losing the set. I respect that. I got a chance to talk to uh, Panda Cat as well, just uh, right after Game 5, and he was like, look man, obviously we, we wish we would have won, but feeling good. We This is how we want to end the season. It's a long season season don't forget so this is absolutely something the team can bounce back from looking at tomorrow we've got games starting at 11 rival will again play this time versus pittsburgh knights we'll see how they do against zeros in the squad and then <clears throat> weekend makes his spl debut here in season six trifecta versus SK Gaming. Should be some interesting matchups tomorrow. Rival not succeeding against Dignitas today has another difficult challenge against Pittsburgh Knights. Sure. But honestly, if there's ever a way to lose a set, this is the way you want to lose a set for Rival. So I'm expecting them to really do their homework for uh, preparation tomorrow. Polar Bear Mike notorious for doing the homework as well. And, uh, you know, I haven't spoken to him directly, but I think I can put money on this one. Polar Bear Mike is the guy that wants to play against the two strongest opponents starting yeah. off. And if, if Dignitas and, and Pittsburgh Knights find themselves at the top of your list, I think uh, Mike's not too upset about that. So that's going to do it for our Thursday day here in our week two of SPL. It's been a blast. And tomorrow, 11, you're, you're not going to want to miss us there either. So for myself, Anatoly, Hindu Man, Taco, Agro, Finch, and everyone else behind the scenes, thank you for watching. Peace and much love to you.